Thank you, thank you for your very, very warm welcome. I just learned two things today. First of all, Cincino is growing. That's good. The second is that balance is now 75% of what you do. So balance is growing too. Oh, yeah. Woo! Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, your diet. And we will, of course, talk about balance, but we will start with your diet. And uh, most of your diet is what we call uh, ready-to-eat foods. And uh, ready-to-eat foods only have a history of 150 years. <coughs> and already from the beginning, there was two or three main trends in ready-to-eat food production by the industry. First of all, <coughs> you saw more use of sugar, which I will show you is the same as saturated fat, more or less. The second was more use of essential omega-6 plant oils. And the third is less use of omega-3 fish oils. And the word essential, of course, means that these oils contain something that is essential for your body, that your body cannot make, so you have to get it through the foods. And uh, why was this trend there already from the beginning? It's very easy to see <coughs> because omega-6 and sugar, they have good stability, they have high availability, and they have low price. <coughs> Those three things are very much appreciated by industry. On the other hand, fish oil, poor stability, need to refine it because you have to take away environmental contaminants, uh, much lower availability than plant oils, and the price is almost 10 times, times as high. So no wonder why the industry chose to go for omega-6 and sugars. Uh, the consequences were two health issues, mega health issues, I would call it, of today. The sugar and saturated thing is the driving force in overweight and obesity. And the omega-6 oils and omega-3 oils uh, that uh, trend is a driving force, is what, what we call silent chronic inflammation. And I will show you both of these, what they are. And to show you a little bit about this overweight and obesity, I will use chocolate spread as an example. This is a well-known chocolate spread you find in the market today. It contains about 50% sugar. It contains about 25% palm oil. And then there, there is a little cocoa and uh, milk powder and, and uh, hazelnuts to give the taste. The sugar is taken direct, when you eat it, the sugar is taken directly up by your cells and transported to the power plant in the cells called mitochondria, where it is used to produce energy, but not more energy than you need. Energy for maintenance of your body, uh, energy to, so, to give you enough to, for your activity. And right now you only have for maintenance because you are sitting still. The leftovers of the sugar will be thrown out of the power plant and will be used by the cells to produce a component called palmitate. And palmitate is the same as palmitic acid, which is a saturated fatty acid, one of the saturated fatty acids that we are measuring in the balance test, the first one. And palmitic acid is about 50% or half of the palm oil that you find in the same product. So for the cell, the cell have two sources then of palmitic acid. The first one is, is from the sugar, and the second one is from the palm oil. They all come together in, in, the, in the cell, and a little bit is used to produce membranes, which will be stiff. And as some of you know, stiff membranes is not very good but that is not a part of today's story. Most of this palmitate or palmitic acid will be taken out of the, of the cells and transported to the adipose tissue and stored in your fat cells. And your fat cells, when they get more fat, they grow like blowing air into a balloon. They get bigger and bigger. And when your fat cells grow, you grow. When it comes to the omega-6, omega-3, balance, uh, three 
different uh, vegetable oils have been very popular for industry during times. Uh, sunflower oil, corn oil, and soybean oil. And they have one thing in common. More than half of this oil is one fatty acid called enoleic acid. It is an omega-6 fatty acid. So that is more than 50% of all these three oils. And uh, because of, of the popularity of, of these plant oils, the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 for intake in Europe is around 12 to 1. In US, it is more than 20 to 1. And if you go to India, you will find something which is almost 40 to 1 on average. So, so use of plant oils is, is huge. But remember this linoleic acid because when that is consumed by you, it can come from plant oils, it can also uh, have an omega-6 diet from, from, uh, from uh, wheat, which has been uh, grain-fed. They will be metabolized or, or, or in, in your body into a fatty acid called arachidonic acid. It is an omega-6 fatty acid with 20 carbon atoms. And the counterpart on the omega-3 side is EPA, which also has these 20 carbon atoms. And those two fatty acids, they are the starting point in your body for super hormones, producing super hormones. One type is called, uh, one of different types, type two and four, coming from arachidonic acid. They are super hormones, which is pro-inflammatory, uh, promoting pro the inflammatory process in the body. Are the three, type three and five coming from uh, EPA is anti-inflammatory. So, so here you have the, the real balance is, is in your body is, is among also among hormones and not necessarily only about the fatty acids. But if arachidonic acid is, is uh, more than eight times higher than EPA in your blood, which is the same as having uh, uh, about 4% uh, omega-3 in your blood, which is the same as eating around 500 milligrams omega-3 a day, then this balance will, will create what we call chronic, silent chronic inflammation. And I will give you an example for, on, for what, what that is, what it means and why we call it silent chronic inflammation. Uh, silent chronic inflammation doesn't mean that the body doesn't produce uh, pain components. It just means that you, you are producing so low that you can feel it as pain. The production is there at cell level, but you don't feel the pain. So that is why it's called silent. It is inflammation, but you don't feel the pain. And I'll give you one example, uh, and that is cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular health. Uh, the, the, the injuries that start by the cardiovascular process, uh, disease process starts in early years, maybe already 15 to 20 years old. And then it lingers on for years and years and years without you feeling anything. So you don't do anything about it until you suddenly have a heart attack or a stroke when you are in your 60s or 70s. So the, the silent inflammation is going on all the time, but you don't feel the pain. But it's there. And silent chronic inflammation is the root cause of lifestyle diseases. And if this ratio of arachidonic acid to EPA is bigger than 8 to 1, this process will go on in your body. But you can reduce it. So if you do reduce this ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA down to 5 to 1, uh, you will have a start having better health benefits, like uh, it will be better with asthma, you will reduce blood pressure down to 4 to 1, you will reduce mortality by 70% in secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, and if you go down to 3 to 1, where you want you to be, you will have all the benefits above, but you will also have normalizing blood pressure and suppress inflammation in, in patients with, with arthritis. So there is a lot of reason to, to get this ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA below 8 to 1. And there's two ways of doing that. You can either reduce the arachidonic acid or you can increase the EPA. Both will reduce the balance between them. And that is what uh, balance 
does. Valenzuela does. He does both. And I will show you why. First of all, Valenzuela contains omega-3. So when, when you consume Valenzuela, the omega-3 will go into your body and will increase uh, part of this uh, ratio between arachidonic and EPA and make it better. But uh, balanced oil also contains oleic acid. And that is actually the biggest, acid, the, the highest uh, concentration of a fatty acid in balanced oil. It's actually many times higher than, than EPA. And the, the reason why oleic acid, which is coming from the olive, is there, is that when you consume more oleic acid, the arachidonic acid goes down. So oleic acid intake increases and arachidonic acid goes down. So that is why balanced oil is so much more efficient than fish oil, for instance, to re reduce the balance. It reduces both arachidonic acid and increases the EPA at the same time. As you know, the balanced oil also contains uh, good antioxidants from olive, hydroxyzerosol, works very well. And you know that this uh, brings the stability or increase the stability of, of this uh, balanced oil compared to fish oils. Makes it last longer when it is on the shelf or in your fridge. But it also makes sure that there is no oxidation going on in your body when you consume balanced oil. So it's neutral, it's safe to use. And it works. It brings the, the ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA down from the average in Europe, which is 12 to 1, down to 3 to 1 if you consume it as required. So this is the, this is the, the, the sort of the reason why balanced oil works. So the rest of my presentation today, I will do something new because I was here with you one year ago. And since that time, I have been following the, in the science literature uh, what has happening regarding in the, in the science world regarding balancing. And I will use the last part of my presentation to tell you what I have found, because I found this very interesting. Especially since I heard that in Finland they now have 10 balanced children. <laughs> or fetus. <laughs> because healthy diet, of course, starts before we are born. And the Matana diet creates lifelong effects. It's the only diet which can create a lifelong effect. So we will see what has been published in that area the last year, and only the last year. First of all, there is a Dutch study from a hospital in Rotterdam stating that uh, if the mother-to-be is in balance, the, be the health of the fetus will be better when it's born. It will be, it, the weight will be higher, the length of, of pregnancy will be, will be longer, and the growth rate will be better. So in general, the fetus will have better health if the mother-to-be is in balance while she is pregnant. Then there was this Finnish study showing that uh, diabetes 1, which is an autoimmune disease, the risk of a child having diabetes 1 when he's born is reduced by the mother to be being in, being in balance during pregnancy. Then there was this Danish study showing that a mother to be which is balanced during pregnancy compared to one that is not balanced will have half the risk of having a, a child with asthma for the first five years of life after birth. So three strong indicators for the health of the unborn child if the mother stays in balance. But then, uh, then it is about the mother itself, the mother-to-be. The chances of having perinatal depression or, or, or uh, pregnancy depression is reduced if she's in balance. So being in balance lowers the risk of having depression, depression, depression situates, situ, uh, situations during pregnancy 
uh, if you are uh, if you are in balance, even without using Viva. <laughs> I was listening to this Viva presentation and it struck me one thing. This is, this is for me, it's important because this is something to do with your work. Uh, if you look at the cost of, the, of mental illnesses in Europe today, the size, the cost is bigger than the, the, the combined cost of cardiovascular disease and cancer. So don't under, underestimate the value of mental, mental health when you're working. If a mother to be, or a, or a newborn, or a or a just a mother that has just got a child, uh, is un, un, uh, fortunate to get uh, gestational diabetes during her pregnancy, all her indicators will be moving in the right direction if she is uh, in, if she gets into balance. So if you combine this into one situation. There is a very strong case for advising the mothers to be to get into balance while they are while they are while they are being pregnant, and that is your job. Yes. Do you think you can do it? Yes. yes. I didn't hear. Yes. yes. Good. That is good because you can trust me when you do it. It is all built on solid science and food safety. Thank you.